So, uh, vendors are mad about Quarter Century Bonanza. So make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more on what I was gonna know. I, I, I have not had the full time to talk about or to watch the original topic on this, but I want to provide some insight that I have seen on what I believe is going to be a discussion for this. So, one thing, I, I've had a couple of discussions with people that opened up mass amounts of this product. And when we saw the initial poll rate data for things, a lot of people said, holy crap. If you're only, if, if these cards are harder to get than certain Starlight Rares, then why are these cards selling on the open market at five ten dollars because that doesn't make sense because even like the cheapest starlight rare was hitting you know fifty sixty dollars and now obviously times have changed with that but you gotta use that as a baseline if a card is as hard as a starlight is to pull across multiple cases mind you out here then why are why are these cards sitting at these low prices so when it came to the pre-sale game for this set i think a lot of people kind of agreed wow fifty dollars for a blue eyes white dragon that's a joke. Why would I spend that in here? And then, you know, we kind of got out of set release, and then you, you started to notice, huh, wait a minute, we, we have pull ratio data. Why is a Blue Eyes out here that is incredibly hard to get, you know, you were you were seeing what, like 20 plus thousand dollars worth of product out here, and you're seeing, you know, six Blue Eyes, for example. That's what, near Starlight numbers? And then you're like, huh, the gears start turning more and more out here. And we reached the point of if people had held on this set, if people had held their blue eyes as in these, these other particular cards and found ourselves in the situation right now, I think a lot less people would be upset. Now, the, the genuine thing I've been seeing out here with this set is people are upset about the loss of profit. That's all it is, all right? And that's what it's always going to be. All right, and, and you'll hear these stories all the time. I should have, you know, I sold that card for forty dollars, and that card went up to eighty dollars. And it's, you know, this is BS. I, I've even read this on cards from this. Say, you know, I sold my card at seventy dollars. You know, the blue eyes popped up to two hundred, for example. You know, you were happy getting that seventy dollars. You know, it's it's an open marketplace. It just so happens a couple days later that more people were willing to spend more money on this. And in the experiences that I have seen with the vendors, that is exactly why they are upset. They are upset because they sold quantities of things at a not maximized number, and they were not maximizing on the profit. Now, I'm to an open market place, everybody. I'm not gonna be the first one to tell you how supply and demand works, but when we look at poll ratio data out here, and you got people, you in the back over there, you're going, huh, you know, four of those in, you know, that many cases? <laughs> I don't believe you. And then you've got, another, oh, you over there in the corner? Oh, I'm, I'm posting poll ratio data to, uh, to fearmonger the community? Oh, some people seem to think I have an entire basement of, see, this is the thing that I always, I get a chuckle out of. Um, uh, somebody, I, I read a comment like, oh, Robbie, Robbie has a pallet of Bonanza over there in the corner. No, there is there is no pallet of Bonanza. I actually just opened up my first case of Bonanza literally this week early on. Um, and it was only because my locals had them. They, they were like, we, take our Bonanza. Like, we, let's we have this on the shelf for a little bit. Like, somebody come buy it. I was like, all right, cool. You know, I'll open my first chunk of Bonanza. And I did. I that that was that was as far as I've gotten on it. You know, I did pull a couple of cool things that I, I did want. Like, I'm so happy about this. Like, I was happy about the Libby. I was happy about the hospitality. But that's that's all you're here for. You're you're here for the discussion as to why the top end food chain that has opened up so much of this product. Or, you know, or actually, this also applies to the mid size vendor as well. You know, the one that opened up, you know, 10 cases over there and they listed everything day one, trying to keep up with the competition. They decided to lowball below that and then their cards sold at lower prices than what the market was at that time. And then two weeks later, you know, you've got prices, you know, just going nuts out here. Yeah, that, that's another case of people. And once again, it all comes down to the same thing. It's it's a loss of maximized profit. There is always going to be, 
then that, that's that's the risk you take in the card game world. I, I, I hate to tell you that. All right, we've all experienced the oh crap, I need to buy a play set of this. I'll wait till tomorrow, and then tomorrow comes, and then you look at it, you're like, holy crap! And, and a similar case to this happened with Maltrami Perulia. You know, Perulia started out at forty. People are like, oh, I guess I'll buy it at fifty. Today it's eighty dollars. All right, that is the most recent rags to you know. Holy crap, I'm rich story that I, I, I have to tell you at this current juncture. But to everybody looking at Bonanza right now and to the upset vendors in the back corner, yeah, I've had conversations with a couple of you. I know, I know. Boo-hoo, you still made profit. You just didn't make as much profit. All right, and the other thing is too, you know, I think if more people realize that the blue eyes and things, if the reality of the situation, had they understood, you know, these numbers, I think a lot more people would have picked up blue eyes and things like that. I don't even have a blue eyes. I don't have anything. I, the only thing I pull have is a dark magician girl, which I pulled. Which, hey, look, I'm happy about this. I have one little collector's card. I'm happy about that. You, you get one nice little thing to add to the collection, and that's fine. Going forward. Gonna, I'm gonna be very, very upfront with you. I don't know if Bonanza 2 will come anywhere near uh, in comparison to what they did with this set, but I will tell you, I have a feeling that Konami's gonna try to replicate this product. I think that Konami is gonna go, well, Rarity Collection 2 was a dud. Uh, Bonanza was a success. We've already seen boxes starting to propel themselves up, uh, which is very interesting, but that, that's what happens when you print, you know, card, print two sets in one. And I think that that idea alone made this set very profitable for people that chose to open it. Now, I've also seen, I've seen some very dog shit boxes. I'm going to be honest with you. You're playing with a pool of 200 cards. You get three of in a higher rarity per case. All right. There's no way you are going to win every one of those. It, it, it's just, it's impossible. Even when I opened up my case, I saw some Dutterinos. All right. And it so happens like you'll get a, like a Silva, um... <laughs> Oh man, uh, what are like the worst cards? Like a, a Silva, uh, a, a not Hospitality Altar, a not House Dragon Maid Altar. You, you know, you'll see a couple of the the three dollar QCRs. You know, um, you, you'll run into these as well. I mean, like the the two to three dollars. Yeah, I picked up a place out of these because I was like, ooh, you know, even though I have ulties, uh, it's just it's one of those things that you you look at these cards you're like some of them are incredibly cheap well if it's a card that i'm gonna play then i probably should pick up a set of them if they're gonna be a dollar two dollars it's just that, that that's how this situation looks and bonanza is not getting any better and i bonanza 2 aka rco4 I am very curious to know what they are going to do, because it's apparent it's going to happen. They sent out the email request. It, it's coming. All right. The writing is on the wall. And if you tell me, if you tell me over there, that there's not going to be an RCO4 before the 25th is over. I'm going to, I'm going to laugh. I, I really am over there. All right. So yes, people are upset because boo hoo, no maximized profit. But you know, if, if everybody were to listen, then huh, the gears would have turned a lot sooner, and I think things would have been a lot quicker on this set. But I will continue to post set ratio data when I have it, when I can get it. Um, you guys, I, I try my best to show these things. It's very, very interesting to see these sets, and obviously core sets are a completely different thing. But remember, Konami can do whatever they want to side sets. Konami only said main sets will look the way that they do. And any sort of discrepancy in data, I try to point out whether or not you choose to follow that is of your own accord. But I will do my best to see what we can come up with. But what an interesting set, hasn't it been? Quarter Century Bonanza has been some of the best activity in this game that I have seen. And the buyouts every single day have been hilarious to see. Like, it's almost like the people with the incredibly deep pockets are, do I say investing into the market huh wild and of course you know you got rarity displacement but that's not what you're here for you ever me to tell you that it, it's it's straight up we're upset because boohoo i couldn't have made as much money <laughs> it's multiple things but it is what it is you guys have a good rest of your day
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.